Here are some insights from Tupac's teachers, colleagues and friends. In the book Changes, by Sheldon Pierce, they come together to explain the real Tupac. Quick quiz, just for fun. While Tupac was getting ready for the Me Against the World photo shoot, what album did he listen to? Was it A, The Lion King soundtrack, B, Ghetto Boys, Grip It on that other level, or C, Prince 1999. Stay tuned to the end for the answer. Tupac was born on June the 16th, 1971, in New York City. Although he was a West Coast rapper, it all began in New York. Here are five interesting insights into the life of Tupac Shakur. Some you may have been aware of, while others may be a surprise to you. Number one, Tupac wasn't the best rapper to begin with. Now don't come for me, but according to hip-hop journalist Rob Marriott, who worked for Source, Tupac wasn't the best rapper in the beginning. Fellow rapper Pudgy the Fat Bastard, who Tupac met through mutual friend Stretch, said it was his poetry that differentiated him from other rappers, but he didn't quite have the precision of an MC. He was definitely more of a poet and a writer, and this spilled over into his rap. But this set a solid foundation for him in being a great lyricist. Rob said, quote, Tupac was not the greatest rapper in the beginning. The thing that makes him a great MC is that he starts to embody all the principles that hip hop is presenting at that point. It took some time before Tupac became Tupac. It was in his blood. He was clearly charismatic. He had the training from going to the creative schools and having the Black Panther background there. He had all the ingredients, but it took a couple of iterations for him to figure out what he was. This should be encouraging to many people because it shows that talent has to be cultivated. The most talented athlete still has to train, face injuries and losses. Tupac had many ups and downs while pursuing a rap career. Hard work and eagerness to learn was key. Richard Pilcher at the Baltimore School of the Arts said he was open to coaching and eager to learn. Some students couldn't take criticism and left the school, but Tupac had the ability to admit what he didn't know and was open to coaching. He said, quote, Tupac was pretty open about what he didn't know and sought to grow. He had the kind of vulnerability that with a little encouragement, he would drop some of that armor. I said to the kids for years, I don't know where you're coming from in terms of neighborhood, family life. I know that you may have to leave here and put up your armor to protect yourself. But here in this class, we need to be able to drop that armor and open up. And he was able to do that. Tupac's friends said he wrote more than anyone else and would always tell them that they had to write if they wanted to be a better rapper. Like most good writers, he believed that you have to write every day without fail. Number two, Tupac dealt with rejection from some of the greatest rappers in the industry. When he first moved to Oakland, he made a name for himself as a freestyle battle rapper. People began to consider him the best and some of them even hated him for it. His New York accent stood out and his ability as a lyricist was something that many couldn't compete with. When he first moved to the Oakland area, Tupac would call himself MC New York. He never intended to use his real name, but his friend insisted that he use his name Tupac Shakur as it was such a unique name with a good story behind it. He eventually agreed to use his name, but he used the number two instead, and that was a small compromise. Despite being respected locally, he was yet to be noticed by those higher up in the industry. One night while backstage at a De La Soul concert, Tupac had a huge opportunity to audition for them. Pudgy recalled him rapping for them. He performed Panther Power. He said they looked right through him. They were polite, but unimpressed, like it was something they saw every day. They had no idea they had just rejected Park. He would have signed with them for sure. Number three, Tupac's complex relationship with the police. Tupac was known for being the guy who always gave cops a hard time. He knew his rights and he didn't hesitate to let them know if he was ever pulled over or accosted by them. Friends such as Kendrick Wells would marvel at this. 
Now this is what he was used to doing while he was living in New York. But when he moved to Oakland, California, he soon realised that the cops there were a little different. We know that Tupac had an incident with the Oakland police while jaywalking. This resulted in him being beaten. Most fans believe that Tupac shaved his head because that was his preference. But he actually did it because of the knots on his head, which was a direct result of that incident. He had visible bald patches. His mother, Efeni, said that the incident broke his spirit and he was never the same after that. His friend Ryan said, he said he was just crossing the street. But I know Tupac. He said that Tupac would always talk smack to them and go in on them whenever he had an encounter with them. Remember Lord Jamar on Vlad TV said that Tupac once spat in the face of a police officer and walked off as if nothing had happened. He didn't even get in trouble for it. Kendrick said he jaywalked and must have said something bad to the police. He said that we are told as young black men not to talk back. But Tupac would say, no, don't do what you're told. Do what any other human has the right to do. You should have the same respect. Apparently back then, especially in the 90s, there was a lot of corruption that went unchecked. Locally, the cops were backed by the district attorneys and the judges would back the district attorneys. But because this incident happened with Tupac, it gained national attention. Therefore, all eyes were on them, no pun intended, and they had to do everything by the book. Plus, Tupac wasn't going to let it go. So he took them to court for $10 million. They reached an out of court settlement for $43,000. That's when people started to notice Tupac and his politics. Rob said people would ask, is he crazy or is he telling the truth? The fact is, he would say a lot of things that people were scared to say. And many agreed with him, but there were those who just didn't like the way he said it. But we have to remember, he was in his late teens to early 20s at this time. So he still had a long way to go in maturing and gaining the skills of diplomacy. He wasn't interested in having a polite conversation. He just wanted to speak out for what he believed was right. And coming from a Black Panther background, he had a lifelong confrontation with the police, the courts and the government in general. Remember, his mother was pregnant with him while she was in jail awaiting her trial, her infamous Panther 21 trial. And his family were harassed by the police when Asana Shakur, no relation, was on the run. So these were his first memories of encounters with the police force. But the incident in Oakland really opened up his eyes and changed him forever. Unfortunately, trouble did seem to follow Tupac wherever he went. Remember in Atlanta, he had that confrontation with the two off-duty police officers. And when he was prosecuted, I believe in court, they tried to paint him as somebody who just had it in for the police. But it was proven that he had no way of knowing that they were cops. They were in plain clothes and off duty. And they were the ones who in fact were breaking the law. And he was found not guilty in that incident. Number four, Tupac was a better cook than he was a rapper. Now these are the words of his friend Kendrick Wells. Tupac was quite the cook and would make food for his roommates all the time. He loved seafood and would make gumbo, soft shell crab, which seems quite advanced to me, and shrimp. Even if any, you used to take a step back and let Tupac be the main cook. Let the master do his thing, she would say. The only downside was the mess he would leave behind. And his meals were always complex and required a lot of pots and pans and dishes. Once he even got into a fight with his roommate Terry over the mess. Now again, according to his friends, he couldn't fight back then. He tried to land the first punch and punched the washing machine instead. He messed up his wrist pretty badly. It was probably broken. He had no medical coverage, so he had to put up with it like that for a year. Five, the story behind the middle finger photo. Tupac was gunned down at Quad Studios. He was there to record a track with Little Sean, an artist who was signed to Jimmy Henchman's label. Now, Jimmy Henchman was a record executive at one point, but many believe it was simply a cover-up. He was actually a well-known New York gangster, along with Haitian Jack, and they were both involved in a lot of dodgy dealings. Tupac got involved with these two, and that's when his life took a turn for the worse. Puffy, Biggie, Little Cease, along with many different artists, were also in the studio that night. Tupac accused them of setting him up. 
Now, much to everybody's surprise, Tupac got up soon after the shooting and went upstairs to talk to them. Apparently, he sat down and started smoking. The ambulance arrived and Tupac was wheeled out on a stretcher. Press were waiting for him as news had spread quickly. He greeted them with the middle finger. The press were not friendly with Tupac. He had received some terrible press throughout his career, especially as ex-vice president Dan Quayle tried to cancel him way before cancelling was even a thing. Most would assume he was giving the middle finger to his enemies and there may be some truth to that, but it was really directed towards the press. According to Ethan Brown, he said, quote, he was very aware that the New York Post and to a lesser extent, the Daily News were incredibly racist publications. Ethan pointed out the Public Enemy song, A Letter to the New York Post, where they rap about 190 years of effed up news. This could pretty much apply today to most publications, not necessarily the R, but more so the effed up news in general. He said, quote, a black man giving this publication the finger is an incredibly powerful thing to do. And it was also very much a statement, I'm alive. Rob Marriott said, as a hip hop journalist, it was important for him to tell all sides of the story given the rapper's perspective too. But that wasn't necessarily the priority of other journalists. If your answer to the quiz was A, you're correct. According to the photographer, Eric, Tupac brought the Lion King soundtrack to the shoot and had it on repeat. So there you have it. Those were some insights from Tupac's teachers, friends, family and colleagues. Were any of them interesting to you? If so, give the video a like Share and subscribe for weekly videos and don't forget to click the bell for more. And thanks for watching.